It was just 10 years ago that divers first discovered this twilight world. They found majestic corals where once there were forests. For these deep valleys had been drowned by the sea. This remote corner of southern New Zealand is a vast land of fjords and rainforests. Here, patterns and shapes reveal an uncanny mirror image between life in the mountains and that in the seas beneath them. Is there some basic blueprint a pattern that connects two such very different worlds. The scientists have been studying the underwater life in Fiordland, and now for the first time they're about to explore its very deepest parts to reveal the final secrets of this mirror world. New Zealand's Fiordland is one of the world's few unspoiled places, scarcely changed since the Ice Age. Thirteen deep fjords have been carved from the mountains by the grinding of glaciers. These ice rivers have long since melted away, leaving steep walls that plunge beneath the sea to form distinctive U-shaped valleys. In the last two million years, this land has weathered 20 successive ice ages. Each wave of advancing ice left its scar on the landscape. As the climate warmed, the glaciers retreated. Now few remain in Fiordland, and they're banished to the very highest mountain basins, where they await another freezing. Another legacy of the ice haunts Fiordland in the shape of hanging valleys and lakes gouged out of the mountainsides. And today, instead of ice, there's water. Moisture-laden clouds fresh from the Tasman Sea collide with the mountains. As they rise higher, the clouds cool and shed their rain. It's a land of a million waterfalls. Fiordland has one of the highest rainfalls on Earth. Almost seven metres a year, it rains two days out of every three. The valley floors are clothed in beech forest, which soaks up rain like a sponge, but the greater part of the downpour quickly swells the rivers. The passing rains leave the forest floor sodden. Tannin, leached from the leaf litter and soil, gives the streams a tea-like colouring. Gradually, the rivers converge to empty their stained contents into the fjords. It's this meeting of river and fjord that makes Fiordland so special.
Freshwater is lighter than seawater and floats on top as a separate layer. In a strange way, it governs the state of life in these fjords. For marine scientist Ken Grange and his team of researchers, Fjordland's extremes offer a very unusual habitat to explore. Light from above is filtered by the stained freshwater, creating a marine environment that's unique in the world. After very heavy rain, the freshwater layer may be 10 meters thick. Each descent through this murky ceiling brings a sense of anticipation, even fear. What awaits in the dark below? Where freshwater meets salt, there's an oily zone of transition. Then suddenly, the divers emerge from icy cold gloom into warm, clear salt water. The saltwater zone is seething with life. Large carnivorous starfish lurk immediately below the freshwater. Starfish cannot tolerate freshwater, so they wait for it to thin between rains before they can reach the beds of mussels above. The starfish use hundreds of sucking tube feet to cling to the vertical faces. Here, the rocks are free of kelp because the stained freshwater layer reduces light so much that it's too dark for plants to grow. A depth of 10 meters in the fjords is as dark as 40 meters in the open sea. At 10 meters, the divers pass over a ledge littered with mussel shells, debris from starfish feasts in the shallows above. Further down, the vertical cliffs provide a valuable foothold for lamp shells. Though they resemble shellfish, Lamp shells are members of an ancient group called brachiopods. They are older than Fiordland itself. There are more species of brachiopods here and in greater numbers than anywhere else in the world. They feed by using a mesh of fine filaments within their shells to sieve out plankton from the passing current. The immense volume of fresh water flowing out of the fjords gives rise to an incoming saltwater current. This current carries food from the open ocean up to 35 kilometers inland, nourishing the cliff face. The divers discover stony hydrocorals. They're actually colonies of thousands of minute polyps invisible to the naked eye. Because they grow only a millimeter or two a year, Large corals like these may be more than a century old. Off the coast of New Zealand, hydrocorals are found at great depths. But in Fiordland, they thrive only 15 meters down. They grow on exposed faces where the food-laden current is strongest. 